Hello everybody, um, hope you're all well and I've had a wonderful sunny Monday. Um, it's such a treat right now, isn't it, to just be, I feel like, touch wood, but I feel like it's wonderful to wake up every morning and think, it's a sunny day again. Um, I've had a wonderful weekend, I hope you guys have too. It's just felt like being on holiday, which is just awesome. Um, and I am super excited to be joined this evening by the wonderful um, Agata from Hatta Cafe, who is going to be cooking with us today. So welcome, Agata. Thank you so much for having me and hello everybody who's joining us today. Um, so I've been, I've been, I feel like I've been harping on about this live all week because I, I, I am actually super excited. I've abstained from my usual porridge fix because I find myself at Hatta most weekends um, and go for a wee walk around, around Inverleaf Park and well, I pick up my porridge before I go and then go for a wee walk around Inverleaf Park. So um, I abstained this weekend because I was like, no, she's coming in on Monday. I'm going to hold off and I'm going to let the porridge come to me. That's it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. And I asked you guys on the polls um, which porridge you wanted us to make today. And the choice was between lemon curd and blackberry, which was the first porridge I had at Hatta. And I think that's when I sort of fell in love and I was like, mm -hmm, these guys do porridge. <laughs> Um, and the other option was caramelised banana, which I've seen on the menu quite a few times, but I haven't managed to taste it yet. Um, so thank you guys, you chose caramelised banana. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm super excited to find out how it's made. Um, and more so, I'm super excited to taste it. <laughs> um, so before we get into the cooking, I just wanted to, um, I'm just going to pass over to Agata to introduce Hatta Cafe, tell you all about it and kind of why the love of porridge why do you have so many awesome porridges on the menu <laughs> so over to you Magata. Uh, hello everyone again thank you for joining us tonight um a little bit about hatta i'll start from the name maybe because a lot of people is asking us what hatta means and hatta means home slash wooden old cottage in my language in polish uh, the only difference in um how we spell it is we drop the C because proper spelling of Hata would be C-H-A-T-A, but nobody would pronounce it the, the way that it um, should be. So we just dropped C and um, there it is, Hata. The idea came from um, me and Andy traveling now two years ago, feels like forever ago. Um, so yeah, we, we visit um, so many different countries and we absolutely fall in love with with the idea of running our own place, our own cafe, where we can meet a lot of people, chat to a lot of people, um, serve nice food that is inspired by all of those places that we visit. Um, so basically, that's that's what happened. And when it comes to me and Andy, um, we usually have an idea, and by the time that we thought it through properly, it's happening. So <laughs> that's, <Love> that. <laughs> that's usually that's usually us. So yeah. Here we are. We we returned um, in October, and after around let's say ten weeks of intense um, decorating the place and doing it up, here we are. Oh well, it looks <laughs> awesome, and <laughs> I you. love it. I personally, I absolutely love it. But also, um, we'll come back to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you all everything I want to ask you before we even start cooking. But um, you guys have only recently kind of been able to open up the doors because I've been kind of peering yeah. in all throughout lockdown being like, oh, it looks really nice, but obviously you weren't allowed <laughs> in for Thank so you. long. Thank you. Um, so now you've finally got your doors open, that must feel pretty good. It feels amazing. It feels great, especially um, for me that I sometimes like struggle to uh, hear people from outside with a mask. I'll be like, what, what? And everybody will be like, whoa. <laughs> so um, it's great to have people indoor. It's, it's great to... to to have a proper chat when everybody's sitting down comfortably and um, having a cup of coffee or breakfast. So it is fantastic. When we opened, we started with having two tables and then after maybe three weeks, we were moved to just serving from the door and that went on through the whole winter, uh, which was a little bit tricky, but great. We, we, we managed to um, meet so many people because at that point of time, all we had was coffee, cake, um, a little take away breakfast and a walk. So it was a fantastic way to uh, to get to know people. 
It was never just a little takeaway breakfast. It was always <laughs> awesome porridge. <laughs> and I have to say that it was rare that I'd been there and there wasn't a queue out the door. So it looks like you're doing pretty well and people are loving you. So, um, yeah, congratulations on that Thank front. Thank you. I think it's awesome. And, um, again, just before we get cooking, um, why so much porridge? There's, you've got, and this I love, but you've got a pretty extensive range of porridge on your menu. Which uh, So what's the sort of thinking behind that? Well, definitely porridge. Is the way to go in the morning that is there's no question about that the idea came from again us traveling we wanted to um serve something beautiful vibrant healthy and delicious so um it would be very tricky to maybe do smoothies every morning especially with the, the you know the a lot of fruit being important into the country so porridge was an absolutely ideal um, think such a versatile thing you can have it in so many different ways you can put so many different toppings on it and make it delicious so I think that's that's yeah. well that's where the, the idea came from love it so glad you did <laughs> <laughs> all right shall we get cooking then absolutely so today I am passing over my chef's hat to Agatha um, again, I feel like I've been slacking lately, actually, because last week I passed over to Jojo to make our rhubarb salad. So I'm taking it easy again and um, passing over the chef reins. Um, so I will just do that. I'll pass over. So first things first, um, if you want to talk us through the ingredients. Absolutely. Um, so if anyone is cooking at home with us today, then shout if you want any suggestions on swaps or anything like that. But um, yeah, just take us through it. Definitely. So um, over here we have um, porridge oats. We have some banana that we're going to caramelize using uh, coconut sugar and um, coconut oil. But feel free uh, to use whatever you like. You can use a different type of oil. You can use butter, whatever you prefer. Uh, we have some berries, raspberries, um, blueberries. Our homemade compote, which we use a lot in our cafe. A very simple um, recipe for it. You're using frozen um, raspberries, 500 grams to... 60 to 85 grams of sugar, uh, cook up together and then finish with a little squeeze of lemon juice. And I also have our homemade granola in this bowl that we're going to use for extra crunch on top of our porridge. Looks amazing. What an awesome table of colours there. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so how many people will that serve roughly? It depends what kind of appetite you have, but I would say it's going to be a good portion for two. Healthy appetite, always. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take it away. Let's no, get cooking. So let me remove this over here. I'm going to throw some questions your way, probably, as you're cooking. Perfect. But shut me up if you're trying to get across an important porridgey point whilst I'm asking you a question. <laughs> no problem. So quickly, I'm just going to start the cooker. Over in here, I've got my pot. And a little tip, what we usually do in a cafe, you start with a little dash of water on the bottom of your pan. And the reason for it is not to scotch the milk when you pour it into the hot pan. Mm. Today, I'll be using an um, oat milk. The reason why we went, for, we tasted uh, porridge with different types of milk. Definitely we wanted to go for something that will suit everybody, so we went for plant-based. And in our eyes, the um, uh, oat milk tastes the best and makes the most creamy porridge. So that's the reason we went for that one. Um, when it comes to proportions, we're going to go for two um, cups of oats to four cups of milk. Nice, so depend, no, no matter how many you're making for, that's kind of your ratio. Yeah, so it'll be one to two. Yeah, and is that the same whether you're making it with milk or water? Because I have to be honest, and I know this, will, this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I make my porridge every morning with water. Mm -hmm. And I actually, and, and I know not many people will agree with me on this, so feel free to give me some abuse in the comments, but <laughs> I... Not sure I can tell the difference between, because I use jumbo, which I think gives you a kind of creamier finish anyway, this is my opinion. Um, I use jumbo oats and water, and that's, I think that's pretty creamy. I don't think I can tell a difference between water or um, oat milk. But 
to be thoughts? honest, I think I think is it's your own preference to a taste. Um, a lot of people like an old-fashioned way of making porridge, which would be water and some salt, and it's absolutely fine. Um, other people go for plant-based milk, and others will just go for a regular full-fat milk. So I think it just really depends. You need to find what, what suits you and what, what you find the most tasty. And so what's your thoughts then? That's quite a poignant question, isn't it? Um, what's your thoughts on salty porridge? Well, <laughs> that's, that's a traditional Scottish way. That really, is a it? very traditional way. Um, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with salty porridge. Again, I think it's a personal preference. Me personally, I don't really like it, but I know a lot of people do it. And it's a very old fashioned way how people used to um, have their breakfast. Because I know that porridge was used to, it was a, it's a staple diet. So, you know, the people didn't only eat porridge for breakfast. It would be kept cold. People would yeah. have it, you know, even in a, in a form of a slice later on because it's, it's a filling meal. So, um, me personally, I don't like it, but I know that a lot of people do. Um, I find that making it sort of more sweeter is more versatile because you can add a lot of different toppings. So yeah. I have to be honest, I'm with you on that front. I, I'm a, I've got a sweet tooth anyway, but I'm all over the sweet porridges. Like, cause, yeah, like you say, there's just so many things you can do with it versus just being like oats and salt. True. Um, True. But uh, yeah, I th I'm going to step out of turn here, but I think salty porridge is a bit of an old person's thing. <laughs> Definitely, um, definitely. It's, it's, it's old, I feel like my older. dad would say salty porridge is the way to go. Is the way but... to go, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, I did just call you old, but yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> Older than <laughs> Um But yeah, I think, yeah, it's salt. Yeah, and not like you say, like all the fresh fruits and stuff you can have on it, it just opens up a world of different flavors. Definitely. Um, just a little tip for making porridge, tiny one, very important. Do not leave milk unattended because we've done this so many times it creates a massive volcano in the cafe and it's a not good start of a day in the morning so. does that happen because well it does actually i was going to ask um obviously that happens with dairy milk but it does it really does happen with plant-based milk as well oh, actually. trust me it yeah. does happen I was, with I, all milk <laughs> i know as i asked the questions i was like i've definitely experienced that as well yep. actually <laughs> and especially in the cafe we use induction which is extremely powerful and you just think oh i'm I'm going to turn around and do something and within that second here we go <laughs> so is this the same method that you're making now is this, is that the same method yes. as you're making so we the cafe? always uh, start our porridge with boiling the liquid first and then adding the oats into the hot liquid okay and why is that um i think because it is a bigger quantity that we make it makes uh it makes it easier and um I think easier to control once the oats are in the liquid than to stir it through evenly and then slowly uh, make it a, make a nice and creamy. I okay. think that's... that's uh, so is that like a... Is that because you're making it in bigger porridge? If you're making it... Do you, do you ever just make porridge for two? <laughs> <laughs> um, we do. And at home, I would make it exactly the same way. Yeah. And I also, also find that it's, it's a good way of control the portion by like looking at the liquid that you kind of like know yeah. what, you, what you're going to get. I have to be honest, I'm a sucker for making, and I love a big bowl of porridge, but I am quite bad for making too much because it is quite hard to judge, isn't it? You think, oh, Definitely. that's not that much oats. Definitely. And then it doubles, quadruples, and you're like, oh shit, that's a lot of porridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's not going to get eaten. but <laughs> Right, um, so now we go in with our oats. Any tips for leftover porridge? Reheat it. Do you just reheat it? And I would just stir it through with I some would, more there's milk. There's nothing, it's... nothing wrong with reheating porridge. There's nothing that can go wrong with that. I've I don't, never, I don't think so. I've uh, never done it. I suppose I've never done really it had in much the house, leftover. <laughs> and it's absolutely perfect. Just make sure it goes on the very um, small heat, and gradually so add, the... add, add a little bit of um, liquid to it. So you do it on the hob rather yep. than in the microwave, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Top tip. <laughs> um 
So, uh, yeah, what I was going to ask you about your toppings, because you've got an awesome array of different toppings. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I've probably made my way through most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you are, and as I know you said you were inspired by some of the flavours whilst you're travelling. But have you got any kind of like um, top tips on flavour pairings? Because you, you do that well. <laughs> um, thank you. It's a very good question. Um, I think when it comes to flavors like we really aim for something that is fresh and it, as as much as i have to be tasty i have to be pleasing to your eyes so the more colors um you can get on the porridge i think is, is better so we definitely have a big um variety of fruity porridges and um, we use a lot of our um homemade compote we always layer our uh, porridge because it is um healthy portion whether you if you ever had um, our porridge and hatha uh, honestly keeps you going all day long um so i think putting something in a layer of porridge is like a nice surprise when you when you when you dig in into your breakfast um and also um adding something crunchy on top i think it's really nice to have smooth porridge with something crunchy on top mm. uh, whether like today we're going to use our granola that has a lot of um oats and um, toasted oats and nuts through it, I think. I think that's actually, nice. so Amy, who's watching live just now, um, that's actually something she always says about your porridge. She's like, oh, I just love that it's got a good crunch to it because mm -hmm. there's always a bit of crunch in it. She's, that's what she always looks for. So that's a winner. <laughs> I definitely think it is. Uh, and Amy's actually also asking, have you tried any topping combinations that you thought would be a winner, but actually they didn't work? Um, hmm us what not to do now <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> i don't think we ever came up with something when like mm, no it's, it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna be popular actually opposite sometimes we we would come up with a combination and then think mm. and then when we made it it's like oh my gosh it stays on the menu so <laughs> so what's your best seller do you have a best seller out of all the flavors um, Definitely the one that we just had this week, which was the Cranahan porridge. Um, I've not had that, that either, was actually. a really, really popular one. Um, and also Jamaican, which is coming this Wednesday. It has um, lime glazed uh, chunks of mango, fresh mango, um, condensed milk, which is mixed with nutmeg and cinnamon oh i've had that one before it's yes. amazing so I, I think that one also is a winner that's some surprising. pistachios or for crunch on top i think it all works really well together yeah i was actually quite surprised by that one but it was awesome i also love the fact and um, i'm having a total love in here aren't i <laughs> <laughs> but i also love the fact that you have you've always got two different porridges on the menu so there's always something that you're gonna like definitely we're trying to aim for something fruity zesty um, and for the other option that is maybe maybe more uh, nutty, chocolatey, maybe sweeter. Mm. So again, coming back to our next week menu. I mean tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I, I just I just left by Wednesday is our day off, so everything after uh, Tuesday is our day off, so everything after Tuesday is next week for us. Um, so yeah, so we will have Jamaican, and the other option will be um, crushed brownies uh, with. Uh, raspberry compote, fresh raspberries, banana, and peanut butter. Oh my god, I actually don't know which one I'm going to choose. I'm gonna, I've got all week to think about it. I'll probably be there at the weekend. <laughs> um, awesome. So where are we at then? So we, so so far we've added some water, then yes. added the milk, brought then that to the milk, temperature, and we added to added some oats, and uh, the oats are cooking nicely. All it I'm smells do just perfectly now porridgey is... right now, actually. Add a tiny wee bit more oats. And again, if, if you want to find a perfect recipe for cooking, in my eyes, there's not a perfect recipe. It's such a simple thing to make. And some people uh, like their porridge thicker. Some people like their, uh, the porridge more runnier. So again, I think it, it depends on your own preference. It is very personal, actually. Yeah, I, definitely. I've, I've been a porridge lover for a long time. Cameraman, not so much, but he's quite lazy when it comes to cooking. <laughs> he's behind the camera, so he can't protest. 
But um, I say quite, he's very lazy when it comes to cooking. So he's succumbed to... I've got, I've got a feeling he's going to get converted tonight. <laughs> well, he's succumbed <laughs> to eating porridge because in the morning I'm kind of like, do you want some porridge? And if he says yes, he basically has breakfast. And if he says no, he doesn't have breakfast. So he's kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, he twisted my arm. <laughs> but I basically end up having to make two porridges because... Mine is like, I'm basically trying to re recreate your porridge every morning, to be honest. Oh like, <laughs> I like it kind of quite, I, I like my porridge quite runny, actually, but I'm all about the toppings. So I'm like, there's always some nut butter in there. I tend to put some protein powder in mine as well, actually. But nice. There's always some fruit on top and there's always some nuts or seeds or something like that as well. Whereas Alan is, um, oh, cameraman, sorry, is looking at me like, you can't disclose my name. <laughs> the game's over. Um, he's very much just like plain, uh, basically as bland as you can get it. <laughs> he's like plain porridge with a bit, of, a bit of sweetener. So it's like he actually is always like half honey, half maple syrup um, and some dairy milk. So, yeah, I like basically make a base pan of porridge and then split it off to two completely different breakfasts. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's very personal, isn't it? Guys, I just took the, the porridge off the heat. And if you look at this, it looks like it's not really cooked yet. But we also found that if you if you cook it to this stage and you actually leave it alone, it sits nicely and make it really, really creamy. So what I'm going to do it now is just like leave it aside mm. while we get on to... Because there can be a point actually where it just suddenly goes super thick. Very true, mm. very true. So I'd rather to leave it like this and then uh, porridge will do its own thing and it will reach that point that's absolutely perfect and um, so what I'm going to do now is put that pan on again on low to medium heat and um, once this is heating up nicely, nicely uh, I'm going to slice some banana actually I'm going to move it just now um, it's all quite counterintuitive right now. We're making porridge in the evening in a sweltering hot kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but we cannot complain because the weather is absolutely amazing in recent weeks. So, so what I'm going to do... Just hold it down near the board. Yeah, I know. We're very quick to complain about the weather, aren't we, even when it's beautiful? <laughs> very true. So what I'm going to do now is peel the banana here. And for caramelized bananas, is this a good time to use overripe bananas? Um, again, I, th I think it is to do uh, with the personal preference uh, with banana because some people um, find bananas too sweet once they ripen because obviously they, they, they do change a little mm. bit uh, once they go through the, through the stages. But so you can basically use whatever, whatever you prefer. Um, it is a good way to do something um, with the banana that is kind of like past the best stage and, and, and do it that way. Um, I'm slicing the banana now and I'm slicing it sort of like a lengthways so we're not going to end up with like a lot of mushy pieces mm. of, of banana. So quite a healthy size of chunks. So I was going to ask, um, have you ever done this? Because I... Bananas are a nightmare because they go from not ripe to overripe in an instant. Very quickly. <laughs> um, so I quite often um, freeze bananas. Could you caramelise frozen bananas? To be honest, I've never tried it, but to caramelise the banana is such a quick process that even if your uh, bananas are still kind of like half frozen, you would throw them on the pan. I think that would work perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, good try. Um, Alison is asking, could you caramelise any other fruit? Um, probably caramelize anything, can't you? Very good question. Very good question. I probably wouldn't caramelize berries, like something that is really mm. soft, because obviously we're going to end up with a sweet jam. But things like peach, nectarine, oh, yeah. um, definitely apple, things like that would definitely work absolutely fantastic. Caramelized so. peach would be a peach. Yep. Please get that one on the menu. <laughs> Plan. <laughs> So guys, right. I'm just going to move into this section here. So what we're going to do, again, pan low to medium heat. I'm going to add our sugar onto the pan directly. So 
just in a little second once we get a little bit of heat through. So sugar before any oil? Sugar before oil. And I've, we're using coconut sugar because I, I only use coconut sugar, but you can use any sugar for this, can't you? Absolutely. The only thing I wouldn't recommend to use is honey because heating up honey to um, temperature that would caramelize the fruit would just kill the, the nutrients in that. So definitely any kind of sugar, whether coconut, white, brown, maple syrup would work, but honey, if you want to add honey, add it on the end of the, the, the process of whipping. So uh, here goes the sugar. Here's a request from Alison. Oh my God, toffee apple porridge. Oh, <laughs> wow. That is... That's a winter. That oh, that's going to be a one. winner for Halloween, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there we go. With a miniature of a pumpkin on the side, I think it will work perfect. <laughs> nice. Loving it. So again, give it a little shake and don't do anything. Just leave it alone. This is the type of thing that I'm rubbish at. I'm rubbish at just letting something do its thing and not touching it. <laughs> it's tempting, it's tempting. It's like, is it happening? Is it not happening? <laughs> and as you can see already, porridge is thickening itself up and it's beautiful and creamy. Mm, this is starting to smell real good. <laughs> Oh, it really is. This, you can start smelling. You've got this lovely base tone of porridge, and then you're smelling the sugar and the bananas as well. It smells good. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna take a few slices of that. that I'm going to caramelize. Leave it aside for me to scoop later. You've got no idea how excited I am about having porridge for dinner. <laughs> and you've got no idea how beautiful that coconut sugar smells right now. Just gently heating up. So do you find yourself, actually, I was gonna, I'm, I'm going to leave the porridge for a second. I was going to say, do you find yourself having porridge for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? But actually, I am keep harping on about your porridge because I have to be honest, porridge and coffee is the only thing I've had from Hatta because I'm 100% delighted by just those things. <laughs> but I have noticed, um, and I haven't got around to trying them yet, but I absolutely will. Um, you've got an awesome range of vegan sandwiches, and, and which I'm surprised by because sandwiches is really the thing that generally sucks in cafes that aren't vegan um, and normally the, the vegan sandwich is yeah it's normally rubbish whereas you're you actually always have a really nice sounding vegan sandwich option i answered that question right now but i'm going to quickly put the, the oil on top because what's happening to sugar right now is starting to change its color mm, and there's a it. very fine line between that stage and burning caramel so I took, the, took it off the heat. I'll answer your question in a tiny no, second. No, no, no worries. So, porridge comes first. Porridge comes <laughs> first. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. And I've got a little bit of burn on the side. So what I'm going to do is quickly switch. We cook it on the biggest ring in here so it looks nicely on camera. And Yeah, sorry. That ring is a bit of a... Bernie Beast, it's hot. So, if you want to switch to the back left, then that's absolutely a fine. One. That's us pretty much done. So, all I'm going to do is just get it over here. And now, what, I'll pass it over yeah. to you. Thank you so much. Just got to have this delicious smelling caramelized sugar in front of me now. Mm. Caramelized sugar is a tricky one, actually, isn't it? Like it's quite, it can it be quite tricky, quick to yeah. go past uh, the point. That's I think what just happened, but we'll try to save it with the coconut oil. So basically, if you just go, if you leave it on just for a few seconds too long, it thickens up like that. Thickens up really fast, and especially like with using coconut oil, the uh, coconut um, sugar is difficult, I think, to see once the sugar is reaching the perfect temperature to add oil through it because it's brown already. Uh -huh. So I think actually we, we have, I think we are past that stage. So 
What I'm going do you to want do. some caster sugar to do yes, it with? Yeah. I think that's what we're going to do very quickly. Bear with me. Sorry. I am actually, I'm very well stocked with every ingredient, but I don't, I'm, sugar is one that I actually always stick to um, coconut sugar. I've got golden caster sugar. Will that be better? We'll try it quickly. <laughs> it should work. Sorry about that, guys. No, no. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch to um, a smaller ring as well. So how much sugar did you want? About 20 grams? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So that's... Can you see okay if I put it on that one? Yeah, that should be fine. Perfect. Right. Not a problem. Switch that off. And I'll quickly start again. Whoop. Sorry, guys. So this is now, so you could do this with, you could do this with any white sugar and um, I just don't have regular white sugar. I've just popped a wee container up there. Oh, is that perfect. about 20 grams? Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, but that's golden caster sugar we're using this time. So it's live. You experiment. Yes, <laughs> guys. Sorry about that. I'll no, don't that do that. Here. Coconut sugar is quite caramelly anyway, so I suppose that's it's got quite a caramelly flavour. Fab. Thank you. I'm sorely tempted to just stick my finger in the pan there. Don't do it because you're going to burn your finger. Definitely <laughs> nothing hotter than um, sugar while it's cooking. Yeah. I'll, I could right, ask you a little again. spoon of um, coconut, coconut oil. oil. Yeah. Perfect. And again, coming back to the options. You can use different sugar with white sugar. You can use oil or you can use butter and um, whatever you prefer. But okay. with that one, you will see in a second that is uh, much easier to see once the sugar is turned on. It was the two things when Agatha came in. I was like, oh, I've got coconut sugar and I've got coconut oil. Do you want to use them instead? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> um, live's not time to try new things, is it? Just going to take awesome. a little second. Yummy. Um, Coming back to your question, meantime, you ask about sandwiches, and that was, uh, for me and Andy, that was a main thing to do simple things, because sandwich is a simple thing, but do them well. And I think, um, again, experimenting with maybe roasting different vegetables or trying different sauces or making our own um, flavoured hummus that will be combined again with something crunchy on, on the sandwich or a different type of sauce um, works really well because I think especially that there's such a um, big switch now for everybody trying to eat more plant-based food mm. and don't eat boring stuff because usually the, the, the vegetarian option would be like cheese and onion. Exactly. It is boring. So, yeah, that's, that's where where our idea came from. So who's head chef yeah. or do you share the load? We share the whole load actually. Um, we both good in the kitchen. We both love to cook. And the ideas and the experiments um, is, is input of uh, both of us. So it makes it, it, makes it quite cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you. So now you can see the sugar is it's reaching the point exciting. that is, uh, Changing, changing the color now. So at that point, you want to go with your oil or butter, whatever you prefer. Have you ever tried it with vegan butter? Does that work? Like just margarine? To be honest, I didn't because we usually would add plain oil, vegetable oil. Oh, okay. Or at home, I would use, I would use butter because I like the, the creamy, creamy texture. There we go. Now banana goes in. Ooh, sizzle, sizzle. Sizzle. I love a sizzle when things get exciting in the kitchen. <laughs> and at this point, it doesn't take long to cook the banana and get this beautiful caramelly color. And at this point also, you can add a tiny dash of water. And go. that way, perfect. And that way, 
you can have your smooth consistency of caramel. Mix it through nicely. There's enough heat in the pan to bubble everything up. And like you, you can see, it takes just seconds to have the whole fruit coated. Mmm, that looks amazing. Beautiful. So Such a gorgeous colour. Within, within seconds. Getting exciting. There we are. You can reduce that a tiny wee bit. And at this point, again, it's really important to do it on a very low heat. Oh, yeah. I am super feel, excited. Also, feel free to add a little bit of cinnamon if you like. Cinnamon mm. goes perfect with everything. So. Oh, that's, that's a way it. to just spice up your... My, I, banana cinnamon porridge is kind of my go-to. That's kind of been like my porridge of choice for years now. But um, this really takes banana and cinnamon porridge to another level. <laughs> there we go, guys. Smooth and absolutely perfect. Even that around three, four, five minutes ago, it was still runny. I think that consistency, creaminess. That's quite is interesting. Absolutely that perfect. So it is a good way, like if, you, if you're making breakfast for yourself, if you're making breakfast for two, it's great to get, get your porridge, get your oats to that stage that you think, oh, I need to heat, stand, yeah. here, stand in here and, and, and stir. Actually, no, just leave it alone. Go back to um, choosing your little toppings, chopping your, your uh, fruit, and by that time when you are ready to, to plate it and make it nicely, you know, it's, it's ready. Because I get really stressy. I'm always like, it's ready. Like, there's not long between the point of porridge being ready to being rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you've proved me wrong. I like it. There you go, guys. So what I'm going to do now is just clean that space a little bit. Just give you a wee pull. Perfect. And in we go with our bowl. I'm going to plate it from here. I love these bowls. These are the ones you use in the cafe, aren't they? They just make yes, it look... Yes, they they're are. So, they're so picture perfect. They are beautiful. They are perfect size. Um, we actually um, got those shipped from Bali. Oh, wow. They're made by a family. It's a family business. Um, by the family uh, that we met while we were traveling. Super nice family. Hello to Ida. <laughs> Aww. So here we go. That's our... Um, Porridge in the bowl. Just pop it down here. Pop it, I'll pop it over here for you guys. And I'm going to plate some banana on the side. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Honestly, I am like I'm such a porridge. Porridge, soup, and cake. They're like the things <laughs> that make me happy in life. <laughs> That looks amazing. And on the site, I'm going to put some. You can't beat fresh compote, compote either. And the color, the color is just the most beautiful red you can have. And on the site for extra crunch. We're this go is for you, Amy. The crunch. For you, Amy. <laughs> there we go on the site. Our granola. Porridge is actually, well, particularly your porridge, it's as much about how it looks as how it tastes, isn't it? Like, they're just so beautiful. You've just got such an explosion is, of flavour there. It is there. so true that you, you say that you eat with your eyes. Yeah. And, you know, having something like that on the front of you, just cannot say no. So here we go with a few berries that are absolutely delicious now and in season. And for extra colour, we go with a few... And they do always look this good, even when they're making them and there's a queue at the door in the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Our well caramelized banana. Porridge. Oh my God, that looks just <laughs> divine. Um, Ali is asking, porridge looks great so far. Can't wait to see the end result. Well, here you go. Um, <laughs> what goes into making the berry compote? So berry compote is really, really simple. We use frozen 
fruit. And a lot of people is really skeptical by using frozen fruit, which I disagree because always the frozen fruit is always um, harvested within the, the, the fruit peak. So um, it's always good quality of, of a fruit. Um, we go for uh, 500 grams of frozen fruit to six, 60 to 85 grams of sugar. Cook it together from frozen, no need to defrost the fruit and a squeeze of lemon juice on the end of cooking. I'm 100% with you on frozen fruit. I've got a freezer full of frozen fruit all the time because if you buy a fresh punnet of berries, then you they just- don't last. They don't last. Yeah. And you end up just eating one type of berries till sure. you get through that one. Sure. And then, so you do raspberries and blueberries and strawberries or whatever you do. Whereas if you've got a, fru a freezer full of frozen fruit, you can just mix it up and have different- Exactly, like, you it's can good, get good all to the have goodness. variety. Yeah, yeah so totally I'm, with you on Totally that. with you there. That looks phenomenal. Alison is asking, can we have a granola cook-along? Will you come back and do a Absolutely. granola cook-along with us? <laughs> Absolutely. Very easy. Yay. Our granola is vegan. Uh, so yeah, next time, if, if, you, if you want us back. Awesome. Um, why not? Definitely granola. Let's do it. <laughs> right, can we taste? Can Absolutely. We taste? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go for it. Right. So we go for a small spoon. Yeah. And... Just to show you guys, look how perfect and creamy. Oh, yeah. I actually wanted to take a picture of this as well, so, but I'm too greedy because I want to taste it. Now I have a question to everybody. How can you not like porridge? <laughs> oh, my God, that caramelized banana is out of this Delicious. world. That is insanely good. <laughs> when is this next on the menu? <laughs> um, a week after this. Actually, I'm so there. There we go. I'm we'll go there. on Wednesday. We'll go to Jamaican um, oh, peanut too. bar with crunch, um, um, crushed um, brownies, and then into that one. So oh my god! Everybody I've, welcome. Everybody welcome. <laughs> I've never caramelized banana before. That is awesome. That is so delicious. I'm so glad you like it. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. God, I'm, I'm just kind of like stunned by the beauty we're of gonna caramelized be banana. That I know. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, awesome. So just let everyone know, just before we go, where, where you are and when you're open, so where they can find you. Definitely. So we are based in uh, Cannon Mills, 5 Rodney Street, among amazing... Across from Tesco. Exactly. And among um, amazing little um, businesses, big shout out to, to all of them. Um, There's been loads that have popped up lately because Manny, Manipoku, yep. the Manipoki um, is there and also the Marshmallow Lady. Marshmallow Lady. Um, up the street, we have Bearded Baker that kept oh, yeah. us going through the entire time when we were decorating the, the yeah. cafe. So delicious bakes and, and delicious coffee. Um, one cannon mill on the corner, fantastic for lunch or a beer. So yeah, um, yeah come, and see us. come and see us. We are open um, Wednesday to Monday with a slight confusion to everybody because we decided to have a little holiday. So we are closed uh, every first Monday of the month. So we have two days together and we are open from 8.30 to 3.30 at the moment. So awesome. come and see us. Please keep doing that. Take time off. You know, people can survive that porridge for a day. You guys deserve- for Only for a day. You guys deserve some time <laughs> to uh, relax as well. Keep the porridge fresh. <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's thank been an you. absolute it's pleasure. Pleasure and, and thank you for having me. Um, next week, guys, join me, same time, same place. We'll be doing a virtual, I've got a virtual guest next week, nice. um, which is Susan from a Hungry Squirrel. Hungry Squirrel do a really creative array of nut butters. Um, so it's not just your peanut, almond, cashew, hazelnut that you kind of normally get. So they do like almond and espresso, all sorts of different flavors of nut butter, and they are on point. Um, so next week I have Susan virtually joining to tell us a little bit about Hungry Squirrel, which is such a quirky little brand and they're based up in Deeside, which is close to where I grew up, so it's got a place in my heart. Can't um, wait to see it, it sounds delicious. Yeah, and we're making um, cacao and espresso almond butter cups. So it's cacao and, es cacao and espresso nut butter and we're making it into like a little sweet treat, so they are delish. So join me for that at 8 o'clock next week um, and we'll see you then. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Gata. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>